Good morning. Just a few announcements. Uh, we uh, confirmation class is after the service today, so um, so the, the kids going through that um, should um, attend after the uh, late. Okay. I think about one o'clock, one to three. Um, youth group, I mean, the, the announcements that are listed are as, as follows, but um, just a reminder for this, the Sunday school kids to, to bring your Valentines next week to stuff the kids' boxes. They did a really nice job of decorating their boxes today, so uh, make sure you, uh, all the children's names are down below um, on the, the page of the announcements. And um, just a reminder that chair aerobics still, um, weather permitting, still at, um, are every, every Monday at 6.30. So does anyone else have anything to say? If not, we'll have Denise start the service. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Holy Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of from above and for salvation. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lord my God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, um, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the, the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar, with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say this to people, keep listening but do not comprehend, keep looking but do not understand, Make the mind of the peop this people dull, 
and stop their ears and shut their eyes so they may not so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed then i said how long o lord and he said until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the lord sends away everyone far away and the vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land even if a tenth part remain in it it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled the holy seed is its stump the word of the lord reading from 1st Corinthians now I would remind you brothers and sisters of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received in which you also stand through which you are all you also are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you unless you have come to believe in vain for I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn has re had received, mm -hmm. that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was buried, oh, no. and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, oh, then to goodness. the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, yeah. most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, 
I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one, only, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a cash. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet... If you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when P Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish they, they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left nothing and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite the children to come down. Children are coming down. So I know you talked a lot about fishing today in Sunday school, right? Okay, so do you guys know anybody that likes to fish? You like to fish? Your brother likes to fish? So Anna, have you ever caught a fish? You've caught a fish before? Um, do, why do you like to fish, Anna? Do you like to fish because do you eat the fish? You got to eat it? Okay. So do you think that the people in the story today are fishing because they like to eat, or were they fishing because they needed to eat? Yeah, they like to fish. They're fishing because they, they, they need to eat the fish, right? And so then when Jesus told them to get closer to the shore and they caught all the fish, he said to them, you're going to be fishing for people. What do you think he means by that? Well, sort of that, but he didn't mean to go and throw a net out over people. What he meant is bring the people, um, was that just as they had bring fish into the boats, they would now be bringing people into the kingdom of God and telling people about God, right? So we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to be fishers of people, okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, just as Jesus called his early disciples to fish for people, he has called us to tell others about his love so that we might bring them into the kingdom. Help us to be faithful, to become fishers of people. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Huh? <laughs> She's going to stay up there. So here in our little congregation, our membership has, ex has experienced some decline. And this isn't surprising. It's a similar story across the whole synod. As older members have died off, 
There haven't been the younger members to replace him. In churches all across America, there's been a long, slow decline over several decades since the end of the baby boom, really. On top of that, we're fighting the culture. We're swimming against the stream. Church memberships and church attendance used to be commonplace back in the 50s and early 60s. That ship has sailed a long time ago. So now, everybody is concerned about numbers. Everybody wants the church to grow. Churches tend to be obsessed these days about increasing their numbers and avoiding decline. And sometimes it seems they'll try anything to stop the bleeding and boost their numbers. Yes, everybody wants the church to grow. There's no dispute about that. But here's the catch. How? How should... I lost my place. How should the church grow? Well, today, Jesus, who after all is the Lord of the church, today our Lord gives us direction on how he wants us to grow our church. The first way he does that is by his own example. In our text um, from the Holy Gospel of Luke, we see people pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God. So let that be what people press in on our church for namely to find Jesus and to hear God's word. Now our church may have other things going for it as well. Friendly, caring people, a warm and loving atmosphere, camaraderie and social opportunities. Those all are well and good, but those are secondary byproducts of what is and should be primar the primary thing. And the primary thing is that people can come here and find Jesus and hear the word of God. In our text, we see Jesus engage in the activity of teaching people the word of God. He must think that's important. And of course, he's teaching the word of God aright. That is very important, to get the message straight. That is what is called pure doctrine, to teach the word of God in its truth and purity. Some people today, even voices within our own church, disparage this concern from pure doctrine, right teaching. They accuse us confessional Lutherans of being caught up in the doctrinal purification at the expense of missional outreach. They pit the two against each other, doctrine versus missions, but that is not Jesus' way. Working on the lake called the Sea of Galilee, as it's called here, Genesaret, Jesus was not a fisherman, but he tells Simon Peter to take his boat, put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. Can you imagine that? Here's the, here's the itinerant rabbi, the son of a carpenter, and he's giving advice to experienced commercial fishermen on how to work their own lake. They ought to laugh him off. At first, it sounds like Simon might do just that. Master, we've toiled all day and night and took nothing, a reasonable objection. The fishermen used all their skill and techniques, their best practices all night long, and came up empty. And now Jesus wants them to go out and drop their nets again, and at a less favorable time. It doesn't make any sense. But there's something about Jesus that causes Simon to laugh him off. Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I'll let down the nets. Jesus' word possesses authority. And, there, and here we see that authority in action. Jesus' word overrides Simon's objection. But at your word, I will let down the nets. So that's what they do. And of course, you know what happens. Nets full to breaking, full of fish. The two boats full. So many fish, the boats are on the verge of sinking fish in abundance. What is Jesus teaching his disciples, soon to be apostles, about how his church will grow? The application is clear. The church will grow not by human skill or effort or technique, but by the word of Jesus. We may think we have all the knowledge and tips and the latest surefire techniques from leading church growth gurus, but here's the catch. The way Jesus wants to grow his church is by his word. Yes, 
Here's the catch. It may go against our expectations. It may seem strange, but Jesus does want to church, his church to grow this way. And that is how there will be a real catch. Churches can try all sorts of techniques to boost their numbers. We've got to have a praise ban and contemporary services and screens on the wall. And some things may work in the surface sort of way. The numbers may go up a bit through contemporary worship. Church growth churches also have been losing numbers too. But is this real growth or is it artificial? Are people coming in not to hear the word of God, not to meet Jesus, but rather to be entertained? Are they coming because the pastor tells funny stories and smiles a lot? Or the church has a school and people join in order to get a tuition discount and avoid the public schools? People come because there are lots of programs. Zimba, volleyball, singles, daycare. The people come indeed because they don't have to hear too much about those boring old things like sin and repentance and faith and forgiveness and the Trinity, and Christ dying on the cross. Those things make them feel uncomfortable. And above all, people today want to feel comfortable. So some churches cater to our mentality, and they water things down in order to increase their numbers. But that is only artificial growth. Our surefire techniques are not the way to grow the church, not the way Jesus wants it to grow. Jesus would have his church trust in his word, to do the job. Simon Peter realizes that. He experienced the fisherman, had absolutely nothing to do with his great catch of the fish. He realized that it all came at Jesus' word. Jesus clearly speaks with divine authority and power. The presence of the Holy One of God causes Peter to become keenly aware of how unholy and powerless he really is. He confesses, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Can you and I say that also? Oh yes, I know I am a sinful woman, a poor miserable sinner not worthy to have my Lord upon my, come upon my roof. The problem in the church today is that we don't trust God's word to do the job. So let us repent of our doubting Jesus' word. Let's repent of relying on gimmicks and techniques and watering down God's word in order to increase numbers. At the same time, let's repent of our failing to actually put out into the deep and go fishing. Have we not even been bothering to tell others about Jesus? When Peter said, Jesus says to Peter, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men catching them alive, bringing them into the boat of the church where people will find life. Fear not, don't be afraid. Our Lord knows how sinful we are, but he does not strike us down. Don't be afraid. Our doubts, our objections to Jesus' word, these are forgiven. Fear not, don't be afraid. Christ died for sinners like you and me and Simon and Peter. Jesus forgives all his fearful disciples because of the holy, innocent blood he shed for us on the cross. Oh, we may think that we know how to run the church. We think it's our church, that we're the ones in charge. We've got our own ideas of how it should go, of how we're going to boost the numbers and be successful. But then we labor all night and come up empty. Is it time to repent of such folly? You bet it is. This is Jesus' church. He will provide the numbers. Sometimes those numbers won't be what we want. Look at the prophet Isaiah. The Lord called him to be a preacher and then told him that most people won't listen to him, just a small remnant, but the Lord sent him out nonetheless. Even Jesus at the end of John 6, many people left Jesus and didn't want to listen any longer. Was Jesus a failure? By the standards of the church growth gurus, I guess he was. But outward success is not the right measure. Numerical growth may happen, but that's not the goal, per se. What the Lord calls his church to do is to be faithful, 
to preach Christ crucified, to preach repentance and forgiveness, to teach the word of God in its truth and purity, and we leave the results up to him. So here's the catch. It's all about Jesus, and it's all up to Jesus. The numbers are up to him. It's not our techniques or our programs or entertaining gimmicks that will produce true growth. Rather, it is the word of the Lord. And so here is the catch. The catch of fish that Jesus promised right here in this church sitting all around you. We are the catch of the fish that the church has caught in her net, the net of the gospel, and brought into the boat. This is a good thing. The church catches her fish alive. And the net result, the gospel, the word of Jesus, gives us life and rescues us from death and the devil. Christ Jesus gives us eternal life as a free gift by his word of forgiveness, the forgiveness he won for you on the cross. And that is the word, that authoritative word of Jesus that will calm our fears and truly grow our church. Amen. No. No. No, she's got the first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Equip your church to proclaim, proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy are you, O God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets and in deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of our natural world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulsive t impulse toward violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in the service of others. God of grace, your, prayer. your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are sick, scared, or in pain. Spirit, pain, pain, spirit, especially Jeff, Larry, Bob, Katie, Marsha, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Chuck, Henry, George, Roy, Pastor Storm, Karen, and Ellen. Those on our prayer list and all who we remember aloud or in our heart. God of grace. Hear our prayer. The disciples received help from their partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us into your glory. God of grace. Your prayer. God, we pray for this congregation. Be with us and guide us during this time of discernment. Fill our leaders with your wisdom. Keep us mindful of the work you would have us to do. Lead us and guide us, O Lord. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Help us to keep the focus to be about the work of your kingdom, even as the search for a new pastor continues. Bless all who have taken on extra responsibility and fill them with a sense of your love and presence. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Oh, there's Kelly. Grab. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us what we have gathered in the feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, 
and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts on heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent up to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the pure, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food to the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Thy my God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Thy my God, you take away the sin of the world, cross Freedom and love. 
kids no kids and Let no us David. pray oh god we give you thanks that you have set before oh. us this feast the blood the body and blood of your son by your st spirit strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through jesus christ our lord amen the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may, ab may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The, grace of all, the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Shine, you people, Christ the Lord has entered. Our human story, God in him is centered. He comes on the sun's surrounded with grace abounded. See how he says. Freedom. <laughs> 